If you want to learn how to hit a heavy forehand or backhand ground stroke on the tennis court so you can be more successful and win more matches, then you've clicked on exactly the right video. Today, I'm going to show you what a heavy ball is and isn't, and also give you some special drills that you can do right now to develop your heavy ground strokes. So if that sounds exciting to you, do me a favor, click the like button, and let's dive right into it. First things first, we need to define what a heavy shot is. In my experience, there's a lot of misconception about this and kind of different people have de different definitions. So let me tell you what my understanding is based on my experience. It's a combination of speed, spin, height, and depth. And check out this rally right here between Mark and Cole on the other side. Almost all of these shots are what I would define as heavy shots. Check out the height over the top of the net. Both of them are swinging with a lot of racket head speed. And you can see the ball kind of hanging up in the air and then diving back down towards the courts. Almost all of these shots are what I would call a heavy ball. And what a heavy topspin ball does is it kind of hangs in the air, dives down towards the court, and then when the ball hits on the court, it comes up higher and forwards faster than what it normally would without all of that topspin. So the end result is basically like gravity was almost kind of literally increased right as the ball landed, AKA the ball is heavier and it shoots up off the court surface towards you and higher. Let's see what kind of the contrast is between a heavy ball and a ball that's just hard or a shot that's been aggressively hit in general because it's important to understand the difference. A hard shot and a heavy shot are two totally different things. I just want to show you a real life example of this. This is Mark on the close side and let's just kind of focus on him. As this point gets started, that really heavy ball, good height, good spin, that's obviously a slice. Then as the point develops, that's another heavy ball, great depth, great spin, and then this is just a hard hit shot. So look at the difference between these last two shots. That last shot, the point ending shot, I would classify as a hard shot. He drove it strongly. He hit it with a lot of power. Whereas the shot before, this forehand that sets up the short ball for him to attack on, watch the shape of this shot. The height over the top of the net is probably five feet, six feet over the top of the net, tons of height but the ball's not sitting and floating, it's moving through the court aggressively. And when it lands deep, watch Cole's response over on the other side, how the ball is coming up into him. And he's getting like, almost looks like he's literally like getting sent back by the ball, like, cause the ball is like coming up and at him. It's a tough ball to receive. And so when Cole, when Cole absorbs that shot and sends it back, it lands short. And this is what lines up an opportunity for Mark to attack. And so look at the path on this shot, the trajectory of the ball on this shot, much lower, much straighter. So this is a ball that's gonna stay much lower in the court and also move through the court faster, but it doesn't have that heavy bounce that the shot before did. So what makes the difference between those two shots? How can we decide to hit one or the other and how can we develop that heaviness? Let's dive a little bit deeper into it. Anytime you hit a shot in tennis, you're accelerating the racket forward towards the ball and that acceleration can be used in different ways. RHS here is racket head speed. And anytime Cole or Mark turned, uncoiled and accelerated the racket, they're almost always generating a lot of racket head speed. And that speed of the racket can be transferred into the ball in different ways. S here in this equation, highly scientific by the way, is spin and P is power. So that speed of the racket can be transferred into the ball either to rotate it and spin it or to send it towards its target. S is spin, that's the rotation, and P is power, that's how fast the ball is moving. And what's important to understand here is you can mix and match those two different variables to create different shots. So a drive, that's that backhand, that mark hit, that really traveled through the court and finished the point. Spin on that shot is gonna be like 10%, and power is gonna be 90%. Just about every tennis shot has some spin. And so a ball that's really just all focused on power or drive, pace, is gonna be like 90% power and 10% spin. Whereas a heavy ball, that's the shot Mark hit before his finishing shot that had the big curve, it's very different. 70% of his racket head speed is gonna to go towards spin and 30% towards power or sending the ball forwards. That's what creates that big curve and then the big bounce 
on the other side of the quartz. So anytime you swing your racket, you can kind of create different ratios of drive or spin, power or rotation. And these are the forces that determine those two things. Spin is all about vertical acceleration. Drive is all about lateral or forward acceleration. So to illustrate this, let me show you some professional players and two different swings that are completely different on this spectrum of forces. If you'd like to continue improving your ground stroke game, make sure to go get a free account at EssentialTennisAcademy.com where we have modules that show you how to improve every part of your game. And for ground strokes, we have two-handed backhand success, one-handed backhand su success, and four-hand power formula. So jump in right now for free at EssentialTennisAcademy.com. So here's Juan Martin Del Potro, and his forehand has been nicknamed Thor's Hammer because he just smashes it and is able to, to hit incredible shots that just blow opponents off the court. Just incredible pace and speed. And we're going to chart something here. This is going to be really interesting. Look at him compared to another example. What we're going to do here is pause the video at contact, which is right here. And then we're going to go back five frames. Oh, there it is. One, two, three three, four, five. Oh, that was six. There's five frames. And I'm going to draw a little mark here in the middle of his racket. So there's his racket five frames before contact. There's contact. And then we're going to go forward five frames. One, two, three, four, five. And so if we take those two lines and draw one through, this is the general swing path that he's making here. Just before contact and just after contact, this is the path that his racket is on as he goes through the ball. So there is some lift, there is some vertical motion here to his racket, but it's more forward than it is upward. It's closer to horizontal than it is to vertical. So this is a ball that's being struck with a lot of forward pace and a little bit of upward pace. So I'd probably give this like 80% for forwards and 20% for upwards. Now let's look at a totally different player. Here's Rafael Nadal, totally different style of play. He's known for his topspin and basically is on the opposite end of the spectrum as Del Potro. By the way, both these two clips were shot with the same camera at the same settings. I know because I shot both of these clips. It's an incredible experience to be able to watch both of those players. So here's contact. We're going to run the same kind of analysis here, where we go back five frames from contact, and there's one, two, three, four, five. Notice the position of his racket, how much lower below the ball it is from Del Potro. And then here's contact, and we'll go five again. One, two, three, four, five. And so if we chart, whoops, here we go. If we chart these two dots, there was only one dot. I was wondering what happened to the second one. You can see a very different plane of attack here. Raphael's is much more vertical. And it's now, I'd say he's past 45 degrees. Again, super scientific here. This looks to me like he's closer to vertical than he is to horizontal. It's close. What did you say, James? Yeah, it's close. It's close. I think a little closer to, the, to vertical. And Del Potro's was closer to horizontal than it was to vertical. You get the idea. The angles are very different. And it's this angle of attack that creates either a drive shot or like a power type of shot, a Thor's hammer kind of shot, or a heavy ball. So now that we know like kind of the technical difference between the two, let's go to the courts and I'll show you a drill that you can do to develop this type of heavy shot. If this video has already been helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. It really helps these lessons a lot. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and these videos. So let's do some drills now. Now that you have a clear picture in your mind of what it takes to hit a heavy ball, let's do some practice drills. All you need is a basket of balls. You don't need a ball machine or a practice partner or a coach. And the first drill we're going to do here is I'm simply going to shadow and practice. You may remember it and maybe our fancy editors will put a little picture of uh, Nadal over the screen here. His racket started with the tip pointed downwards, and then he rotated the racket upwards around in a circular path. And you don't need to finish like Nadal in a reverse finish to hit a heavy ball. 
it can help to hit really aggressive spin, but it's not something I recommend, to be totally honest with you. It's a, in a fringe case, yes. It's a, like an auxiliary uh, type of shot, I think, for most players. So from here to here, I'm practicing tracing a half circle with the tip of the racket. And from a side angle, what you want to do is just kind of almost imagine like you're going straight up a wall and make it as aggressive feeling as possible. I'm going forwards a little bit, but most of my motion here is vertical. And we want to make sure that that's the case. The balance is in the vertical direction and not forwards like Del Potro. So after getting a good feel for that, I'll start turning over a little further so my butt cap is pointing, finishing the other side. And then I'm going to practice dropping and turning and finishing in that position with my racket tip starting down and then turning up and finishing with my butt cap facing forwards. And so as I do this, I'm listening for a brushing or clicking sound. That's the strings moving past the ball on the way up to that high position. And I'm watching for a big curve or arc in the ball. I'm not trying, I'm not swinging fast yet, so I'm not trying to send it deep in the court. To be honest, even if it doesn't go over the net, it doesn't matter. As long as the ball goes up and curves and comes down again, you're on the right track. So that's, that's step number one. Step number two is start to integrate this with a normal take back. So start with the racket up and practice dropping and then lifting. Up, down, up. And then go ahead and drop. Down, up. So now we have more momentum traveling through the swing. We're still listening and feeling for that brushing or clicking sound of the strings going past the ball. And we're looking for that nice, distinct curve or arc of the ball. And then step number three is start to go fast. And here, you're going to have the tendency to get tight and tense and like muscle through it. And I want to really encourage you to keep it loose and relaxed. So keep it really relaxed and start to ramp your acceleration. And don't go all at once. For me, this is probably like a five out of 10. So start off just kind of half speed. Already you're starting to see the ball uh, curve and come down quickly and then jump up on the other side. And then as you speed it up, more and more, you'll start to see more jump of the ball on the other side and try to make your way gradually up until you're hitting like a seven or eight out of 10. And that last ball hit the curtain. It landed in by several feet and hit the curtain like four or five feet below the top, the wire up there, the cable. So that's the type of bounce and kick we're looking for off the courts. Please don't go up to like 10 out of 10 swing. Keep it in a controlled speed and just practice getting that vertical motion. And once you get the hang of it in a very controlled environment like this, you can start to practice it with a ball machine or somebody feeding to you or in a live rally. If you send the ball out and it's sailing, that means your racket face is too open. And if you hit the net and you're not getting the curve, it means your racket is not dropping far enough below the ball and you're not sending it up into the air enough to get that spin. You're going too forwards. So hopefully this is helpful. Get out there and practice this and you'll start curving the ball and hitting with more heaviness too. It's an incredibly valuable shot. Thank you for watching. If it was helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. If you have any, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.